Okay, we've explored the fundamentals of a radial wrist lock and an ulnar wrist lock. Now we're going to take a look at a flexed wrist lock. The flexed wrist lock is probably the most used, the most convenient one that you're going to get. What I want to do with a flexed wrist lock is simply get his palm pushing toward his elbow. Now it doesn't matter what angle I get this at, I'm going to get plenty of pain compliance off this flexion of his wrist. I'm using the thumbs toward the arm as an approach to this, but it also works with the thumbs pointing away or the thumbs pointing toward the fingers, securing the hand, and as I bend the wrist in, no matter what direction I aim his elbow, that's where he's going to go. He's very cooperative once that pain starts setting in on the inside here. So, I want you to notice two orientations of the thumbs on these flexed wrist locks. My thumbs are either pointing away from his fingers, that is, up toward his elbow. At that point, I'm pressing in on the knuckles and then aiming his elbow up. Notice he's coming right up to his waltz dance step because <laughs> there's just no other place to go once the pain sets in. This is an easy direction to break the wrist down and guide your subject slash opponent where you want him to go. From the other side, just so you get a picture of it, here's the thumbs along the back of the hand, but my thumbs are pointing toward his elbow. Flex the wrist and then get the elbow pointed up and your opponent is off balance and easy to move in whatever direction you want him to go. The other option is with the thumbs pointing toward the fingers. Notice I'm grabbing onto the, the, the pads of his thumb and under his finger. This is called the thenar eminence. This is called the hypothenar eminence and they're both those pads. I don't want to reinforce his wrist. I don't want to grab down on his wrist. I want to make sure my grip is secure on the pads of my opponent's hands. Then as this breaks in, I begin to guide him with his elbow. So I'm breaking the wrist in, and then I point the elbow wherever it is I want him to go. So again, two grips on this basic flex wrist lock. One, my fingers are pointing toward his fingers. I secure the two pads, the eminences on, on the palm of his hand. And then once I flex the wrist, I'm driving the elbow whatever direction I want him to go. The other orientation is when my thumbs are pointing up his arm and I'm securing the eminences the thenar and hypothenar with my fingers from this angle, break the wrist down, and then you direct the, the, the elbow in the direction you want him to go. So the fundamentals of these locks, both thumbs pointing up the arm, break the wrist into a flexed position, then start driving along the line from the wrist to the elbow, sending him in whatever direction you want him to go. The other orientation is when your thumbs are pointing along his fingers, your hands grab the eminences of the, the pads under his thumb, his, his little finger, then as you break the wrist in, you're going to drive the elbow in whatever direction it is you want him to go. Now I'll show you some more applications or grips on this in a minute, but the fundamentals of a a flexed wrist lock. I want the wrist to flex. I can do this with a lot of different grips, but the fundamental grip for now, thumbs oriented toward the elbow, break down the wrist, then press along the line between the wrist and the elbow. The other option is thumbs pointed toward the fingers or away from the elbow, break down the wrist and then press along the line from the wrist to the elbow and aim the elbow in whatever direction 
you want your opponent slash subject to go.